This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. SpaceX Starship updates, Rocket Lab reusability and Cargo Dragon V1 nearing its end. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. As always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. The big news lately was that SpaceX paused the work in Cocoa, Florida in favor of combining the two sites into one single effort in Boca Chica. And a few days after I first spoke about it, we can already see the results. SpaceX is using parts from Florida in Texas. Go Discovery delivered the precious cargo to Port Brownsville and trucks delivered it to the construction site. Two jigs for Starship construction that were likely intended for Mark IV, SpaceX's second generation Starship prototype in Florida and a bulkhead presumably intended for Mark IV as well. The reason why we did not see any new ring stacking on site might be that SpaceX workers waited for these jigs to arrive. If they were intended for second generation Starships anyway, this would make a lot of sense. Now everything should be in place for the foundation ring of Starship Mark III. SpaceX began construction of Mark I in March this year. Progress was slow in the beginning and SpaceX started with the nose section. It took SpaceX roughly 8 months to build the first generation prototype. With Mark III, a lot of things are going to change though. SpaceX is utilizing coil building on the new prototype. The same construction technique SpaceX used in Florida right from the start. This in theory makes the process quicker and the resulting ring segments stronger as each ring only has one weld to fuse the steel together. Florida had problems with this technology though. A lot of the rings they made had to be scrapped. I had an interesting chat with a business insider and he confirmed to me that the most important person in this construction process is the worker operating the machine responsible for producing the ring segments. A so-called coil building system is used on site in Texas right now. These machines have several purposes. First of all, it unwinds the stainless steel coil that has been delivered by Newcastle, a company specialized in making the kind of steel that SpaceX needs. In the process of unwinding the coil, the machine first straightens the metal sheet and then bends it precisely into the diameter needed for the Starship prototype. In the end, the machine cuts the sheet and fuses the two ends together with plasma arc welding. This technology is nothing new. SpaceX borrowed it from an industry specialized in making storage tanks. So in theory, there should be qualified workers available to do the job. GPI, for example, is a company based in the Netherlands, specialized in exactly this construction method. They even go one step further and produce the whole tank in one semi-automated process. Musk already said that future Starship production could be automated, so this is what the company might be aiming for in the end. Pistons with titanium coated wheels to guide the metal are placed at the exact diameter needed. Once the machine has built one full ring, the pistons, capable of lifting 150 tons in this case, lift the ring segment up exactly as much as one ring segment is high. While the machine now bends the second ring segment directly under it, an automated welding machine fuses the two rings together in the same time. When the full circle is done, the second ring segment is welded together and the whole stack is lifted up again. This process is just repeated until the tank or in SpaceX's case the Starship hull is finished. In theory, this process could be used at least for two thirds of the hull. This would extremely speed up construction time and at the same time ensure precise welds of the same quality on every ring segment. It's not clear yet if that is what Musk referred to when he said that Starship hull production could be automated. But it's also safe to say that that's not what SpaceX is doing right now. What we can see in Boca Chica right now is exactly what SpaceX did in Florida. But we can also say that the results we could see in Florida looked much less dented with far fewer welds on the hull. SpaceX's Starship Mark I is almost gone now. The ring segments have been separated again for easy scrapping and the leg housings have been taken off. If there is no change on the initial leg design, we might well see these leg housings being used again as well. Nothing though has been done on the Mark I nose section. It's been sitting next to the new container Ford with no visual changes. 
If SpaceX does not intend to use the old nose cone, we should soon see disassembly work there too. One of the jigs from Florida has already been placed next to the ring wall in front of the windbreaker. Presumably this is the place where the new tank section will be built soon. Basically everything is in place for SpaceX to start building Mark III and since Musk already said that the flight hardware of Mark III will be quite different, the next phase of construction should be equally interesting. If you liked the update, now's the chance to show your love. Click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done it yet to receive notifications on every single episode. Thank you. Rocket Lab – One Step Closer to Reusability On December 6th, Rocket Lab launched yet another rocket out of their New Zealand-based launch facility. The mission was called Running Out of Fingers in homage to the completion of their first 10 flights of the still very young launch system Electron. Typical for an Electron launch, the commercial ride share for this mission was comprised of seven small payloads for all sorts of missions. The Electron rocket is Rocket Lab's one and only launch system. Right now, the rocket is flown as an expendable launch vehicle, re-entering the Earth atmosphere and crashing into the ocean after launch. Rocket Lab intends to change this though and enter the reusable rocket market to further raise launch frequency and drive down costs. After Peter Beck's announcement in August that Rocket Lab would be trying to recover boosters in the future, a project was set in motion to achieve the goal in several steps. First steps have already been performed on two previous launches, mostly collecting data on booster re-entry. This time though, the rocket was outfitted with guidance and navigation computers and control thrusters to position the booster on re-entry and enable it to follow a narrow path down through the atmosphere instead of the normal uncontrolled re-entry. Beck said numerous times that the hardest part for his company was to enable the booster to survive this re-entry process intact. When it comes to landing, Rocket Lab chose a very different approach from what we can see on SpaceX's Falcon 9 boosters. Where SpaceX chose to perfect a propulsive landing on land and sea, Rocket Lab will deploy a parachute and then try to catch the rocket with a helicopter. Beck said that by completing last Friday's launch, about 50% of the project was completed. Rocket Lab also said that they are planning to do the guided re-entry again to get more test data and that the Electron rocket would then be ready to be outfitted with a parachute system for further tests. If these parachute tests go as planned, Rocket Lab will then be ready to attempt the catch. While it would be important for Rocket Lab to reduce launch costs, the main reason for the whole project is to raise launch frequency. Rocket Lab right now is building a second launch site in Virginia at NASA's Wellops Flight Facility. With this second launch facility located on the United States East Coast, Rocket Lab's goal is to launch as many as 120 rockets per year. By recovering boosters, Rocket Lab could effectively double their launch frequency overnight. If everything goes as planned, we could be only three launches away from a first recovery attempt by Rocket Lab. Next launches are planned for the first weeks of 2020 and it will be quite exciting to see a helicopter snatch the rocket right out of mid-air. Go Rocket Lab! Dragon V1 nearing its end. SpaceX did it again. As part of the ongoing commercial resupply program, SpaceX sent yet another cargo dragon to the ISS to resupply the station with all sorts of supplies and science cargo. Following a scrub due to strong upper level winds on December 5th, SpaceX used their second launch window on December 6th and successfully launched the cargo dragon on top of the brand new Falcon 9 booster 1059. The launch went exceptionally well, including a soft touchdown on Of Course I Still Love You. Due to a special thermal test of the upper stage involving a longer boost duration for the first stage, SpaceX was forced to use their drone ship as a landing site, which usually is not needed for a CRS mission. Everything went fine though and following a perfect separation, the Cargo Dragon C-106 was sent on its way for the third time to catch up with the ISS. Just two days later, the capsule arrived at the ISS, delivering 2,617 kilograms of payload, including 40 mice, to the ISS. This flight marks the 21st flight of the first-generation Cargo Dragon and the 20th mission to the ISS, taking into account the successful second demonstration and CRS-7, which failed to reach orbit. There will only be one more flight utilizing Cargo Dragon V1, ending the first phase of the commercial resupply contracts. 
CRS-21, planned for August 2020, then will utilize Cargo Dragon V2, a revised and updated version of the hardware. Based on the same design as the Crew Dragon, Cargo Dragon V2 will, unlike V1, which needs the Canada arm for berthing, be able to automatically dock with the ISS. Cargo Dragon V2 will also be able to do 5 flights per capsule instead of 3 on the old hardware, reducing costs even further. SpaceX's tactics to constantly improve hardware is not limited to boosters. Most other cargo vehicles have been in service for decades without major upgrades. SpaceX puts every bit of knowledge gained on missions right back into the development of next generation hardware. Because only if you have the proper knowledge you can improve on your projects. Everything has to go step by step. You can accelerate your progress though by gaining the knowledge in a more effective way. This Christmas, help others to improve their learning methods. Gift a premium subscription from Brilliant.org Learning often is not about the right mindset, but about the right approach. Everyone learns in a different way. Some read, some need to see a graphic, and others need a good old riddle to get those brain cells to learn something new. Brilliant.org combines all these and many more ways of conveying the knowledge in an easy to understand way. And the best thing about it? You can pick the topic you want to learn next from a large library of interesting subjects. Learning can be fun if it's done in the right way. Go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and grab a gift subscription to help your loved ones to find their own way to a smarter tomorrow. The first 200 to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So gift smarter with brilliant.org. Link is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will SpaceX ever automate the ring stacking and when will Rocket Lab catch their first booster? As always, tell me in the comments. And here we are again, at the end of the episode, thanking all those patrons for making it happen again. Patreon by far is the most important funding source for me and the help is invaluable. Patrons are those who spend time with me in between the episodes. They pitch in ideas, research and they get behind the scenes insights and that's why I thank them on every single episode. And as always, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Horst Fuhrmann and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Tank in a semi-automated process. Pro automated process. One ring to bind them all. It's not clear yet if that's what Musk meant. <laughs> the mission was called Running Out of Thing Out of Things. On December 6th, Rocket Lab Yo Yo <laughs> Would we would would